Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're going to get started in just a minute. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to get started in just a minute. While we're waiting for others to join us, uh, if you want to say hello in the chat box, let us know where you're joining us from. All right, let's see, we have some folks from Ohio, California, Vancouver, Oregon, Buffalo, New York, Texas, North Carolina, Houston. Okay, we have a lot of folks joining, joining us. New York, got a few from New York and Maryland. Ah, that's the first place of somebody joining us from France. Hi. All right. Hello, everyone. Great to see everybody in the chat box. I'm going to, go to continue saying hello in the chat box. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I want to welcome everyone. Your phone line is muted. This webinar is being recorded, uh, and the link to the recording and slides will be shared. So welcome to our webinar, Summer Comes Alive with Camp Con and Pixar in a Box. My name is Leslie Gabay Swanson. I'm the Director of Program and Systems Quality at the National Summer Learning Association. Before we get started, here's an overview of our discussion today. First, I'll share a little bit about NSLA and Summer Learning Week. Then we'll hear from our featured guests. Um, we'll have time for some audience questions and then we'll wrap up with some announcements. While we're going along, um, if you have any questions that you would like asked and answered live, please put them in the Q&A box. Um, I'll try to catch them if they're in the chat box, but it's a little, a little bit harder to see them there. So if you have a question that you would like asked and answered, please try to put it in the Q&A box and we'll, we'll get to them um, when we have time at the end. So I just want to say happy Summer Learning Week and thank you for joining this virtual event and celebration. For more than 25 years, NSLA has advocated for summer learning as a solution for equity and excellence in education. And summer couldn't be more important than it is this very moment. America's children and their families continue to face extraordinary challenges this summer amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. That's why NSLA is calling on all our partners and families during this, net, this summer learning week to help us elevate why summer learning is essential to the nation's recovery and to each do our part to keep, keep kids learning safe and healthy. Each day of NSLA's National Summer Learning Week focuses on a different summer issue, from literacy, STEM, and the arts, to the importance of nutrition and wellness, to programs that introduce young people to career possibilities and civic engagement. Your participation sends a powerful message across the nation that summers matter, and there are many ways you can engage this week. Starting on our website, summerlearning.org forward slash summer learning week, you can check out the theme days and resources for hashtag summer learning week and ideas and uh, for ideas and inspiration. We also encourage you to take action to protect funding for summer and after school learning programs. Community members can contact their federal, state, and local representatives to communicate their support. 
We also encourage you to share your favorite summer learning memories or plan activities with our hashtag summer matters social media challenge. And use our outreach toolkit to amplify the message that summer matters. You can also text NSLA to 9199 to make a donation to NSLA. Links to all of this and more can be found on the Summer Learning Week pages of NSLA's website. Today, I am happy to welcome a value partner in this movement to keep kids learning, Pamela Fox, computing content creator at Khan Academy. During this crisis, Khan Academy has stepped up in a big way to support the continuation of learning at home with their free world-class learning system that reaches more than 18 million learners every month in 190 countries. So with that, I will turn things over to Pamela. All right, hi everyone. It's great to see so many people here. Let me share my screen now. All right, so I'm Pamela from Khan Academy and I create the computer science and computer programming courses on Khan Academy, which are super fun. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Camp Con and then Pixar in a box. So Camp Con is, uh, is something that we put together for, especially for this year, uh, because this is a very important summer to help, uh, to help students out. So this is a way to prepare students for their math for next year, build their confidence for years to come. And this is a really crucial thing to do this summer, as many of y'all know. <laughs> so CampCon runs from June 22nd, already started, uh, but don't worry, you can join and stay for however long you want, and it goes till August 28th. Uh, it's for students entering grades 3 through 12. If you do have a younger student than that, then you can check out CampCon Kids. And this camp come, it has three components. So one component, big component, is our get ready for grade level courses. And that's what's going to help the students build the math skills so that they can feel confident going into next year. Then there's strategies for self-driven learning and then fun summer learning activities. So all those together make up Camp Con. Now everyone participating in Camp Con will receive weekly emails with suggestions. Um, some of those will be learning goals for the get ready for math grade courses. Some of them will be learning tips, uh, such as conversation prompts that you can have with your children, uh, reflection prompts for students to reflect on their learning process, tips for just using Khan Academy, like how to use our hint system when you're feeling stuck. And then another component of the emails will be fun and motivational activities like Pixar in a Box, which I'll be showing you after this. Plus, all of these emails are available in Spanish, which means all of the content is also available in Spanish because there's a ton of Spanish language speakers that are going through this as well. Uh, so all the Pixar in a Box and the math courses all in Spanish. And here's the thing, you don't actually have to sign up for Camp Con. If you're a parent, you just sign up as a parent. If you're a student, you just start using those Get Ready courses and then we'll just automatically start sending you these Camp Con emails. So let's talk about these Get Ready courses because these are new this year. Uh, so the math team came up with these Get Ready for courses specifically because uh, we have so many students and parents and teachers that are all stressed about, uh, you know, being ready for their next year of math. There's a lot to learn and there's always a summer slide during the summer and this year even, even more so. Uh, so these courses cover the most important skills that students need to master to have in their foundation so that when they go into the next grade of math, they're able to learn the new skills. Um, and you can use these courses to figure out which things you've already are still remembering and which things you're struggling with. Uh, so let me just show how we get to those courses. So if we log into Khan Academy, and click the courses menu, you'll see this whole section here of the math get ready courses. And so whatever grade you're entering next year, like if I'm entering eighth grade, I'll click get ready for eighth grade. And you can see, I, I've already slightly worked on this, <laughs> um, but the best thing to do is to start with the course challenge. And this will grab questions from all over the course, all over the topics. And uh, it'll be a bunch of questions so that it helps you figure out 
which of those things are you struggling with? Which of those skills should you be focusing on, right? So after you take that course challenge, we know, okay, actually do this exercise next, right? And if you don't even remember how to do it, that's not a problem. You can go and watch the videos, you can watch multiple times, you can ask questions, lots of ways to get help. Uh, so this is how you get started. And then what you wanna do is you just wanna keep on working on your mastery percentage and uh, keep, hopefully keep seeing that go up throughout the summer. So that is CampCon. And we hope that is something that's really helpful for all of you this summer. And I can answer questions about that later. First, now we're gonna dive into Pixar in a Box. So this is one of those fun activities we're talking about that you can do in addition to the, the core math skills. So Pixar in a Box, this is a course that we put together with Pixar, which shows how you can use imagination and technology in order to create these amazing films. And the cool thing about Pixar in a Box is that it brings together all these subjects you learn in school. So math and science, physics, computer science, programming, humanities, writing, all of those things come together in order to make a film. All of those skills are necessary to make a Pixar film. So whatever you're into, there's a place for you at Pixar. I will admit in high school, my goal was to work for Pixar and uh, I wanted to do animation. So uh, it's, it's nice to have something that everyone can aspire to be a part of. Now it's like, I kind of work with Pixar. <laughs> so this is Pixar in a Box. Now, the, what I really like about Pixar in a Box is that it has all these videos where they're actually filmed on the Pixar campus. So you get this behind the scenes look at um, how the filmmaking works and you get to actually see their studio. So I'm gonna show a snippet of one of these videos to get a feel. And let me, let me know if it's not working. Our films start in story. Along with the director and the writer, we figure out what happens using simple drawings. It's kind of like a comic book. Exactly. And while we're drawing, production designers and their teams start designing the world and the characters. While they're painting and drawing and sculpting, our storyboards go to editorial, where they string together all the drawings that we've created. We time them out, add music, dialogue, and sound effects. He's the only one who knew what the heck was going on! And as these shots go through each stage in production, we'll update this scene over and over again. And this is where the science and the math come in. Okay, so hopefully you heard the sound on that. So that gives you an idea for, uh, for some of the videos and for the topics that this course goes into. So now let's dig into the first unit. Um, this is the art of storytelling. This is the first unit and also the most popular one. It's one that works for all age levels. So starting as, as young as elementary school. And it's just, you know, how do we make a story? Uh, so starting off with some prompts to think about what ifs and memories and all of that and getting into character and then getting into the structure of a story. So there's some, there's, you know, throughout this, we've got both videos and hands-on activities. So I wanna show one activity that's um, one I particularly like. This is the story structure activity. Uh, this uses something called the story spine. This is something that Pixar uses in order to come up with a basic template for stories. And this is something that your students and your children can use to be able to make stories more easily. And it just has eight parts. So in this activity, it tells you to first take one of your favorite movies and to try and break it down in terms of these eight parts then play this game with a group of people where one of you will come up with each of these lines so that you make a story together as a group and that's nice because there's not as much pressure for you to come up with the whole story yourself uh, you each get to contribute a part of that story so it's less intimidating than coming up with a whole story yourself and then finally that's when you try and make a story spine entirely by yourself so this is actually an activity that I do for fun with my friends. Uh, so to show you, 
uh, we actually recorded ourselves doing it on Zoom this weekend so you can get a feel for what it looks like. Once upon a time, there was a very lonely comet flying through deep space. Every day he would fly through the emptiness of space and wish for company from other astral bodies. Until one day, he saw a big star in the sky that was beaming. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Because, because of that, he summoned all of his willpower and changed course directly toward that star. Because of that, he started researching on the universal interweb how to properly land on a star without burning. Because of that, he was, he was uh, very sad to find no answers on the universal interwebs concerning safe uh, atmospheric reentry for comets into the you know outer corona sphere of a of a, a very happy star. <laughs> Until finally, he realized that his dreams of being with other astral bodies were bad dreams to have, and he would just stay in the emptiness of space himself. And ever since then, he's been into Zen and accepting reality. And just saying, I'm alone. I'm alone. The moral of the story is to make the best of the situations you're given. All right. So that was a bit of a, a, a sad story, but I thought the happy star was great. So that was a story that um, we didn't plan. It just came out because of the story spine. Um, so that was an example of doing over Zoom. You could also do it. Uh, in person, you can write on a piece of paper. You can see I've got a whiteboard that always has it written out just in case it's time to do a sport story spine. Um, but it's a really neat way of coming up with a story. Uh, I also wanted to show that I found uh, some examples of students doing it online. So you see here is where you've actually written it out. So this is another way where you could do it is write it out and then fill it in. This is what maybe you do when you're making your own from scratch uh, or you could pass it around. Tons of different ways to do this activity. So really cool activity, um, really fun, all ages, adults, elementary school, any age. So that's that activity. And um, then, then this unit also talks about visual language. So it talks about motion and lines and color palettes and shot angles and all of that. So you learn a lot about that from the, you know, the Pixar creators. And then we get to a storyboarding activity. So this is really fun. This is where you can take that story that you made in a story spine and actually start to draw it out according to everything you've learned about angles and um, emotions and all those things that they evoke. Uh, so this is really fun. And I found some great examples of storyboards. People, this is where they did a, a storyboard using post-its and having people fill in shots for each one. Um, here's one where you can see a bunch of flashcards with the pictures on it. Let's see, here's another one. So you, you don't have to color, you know, you don't want it to be too intimidating, whatever it is that your students want to do, um, you know, to, to feel creative and to work out what their story idea is. And this I thought was really cool where they actually use things like Legos and magnet blocks in order to make the worlds for their stories. And that helped them get a, a better idea for these stories that they were coming up with. So that's the art of storytelling. Uh, there's a lot in that unit. Uh, it's a really great unit and that's what um, we often recommend starting off with. Uh, but there's also a lot of units that go into the math and the science and the more technical aspects of creating movies. So I'm going to show a few examples of that. The animation unit. This one's super fun because you actually get to make animations while you're going through it. So once again, we've got videos, but we've also got interactive virtual exercises to make animations. So we first we learn about just straightforward 
animation. And here I am animating a ball bouncing up and down. Let me try and get it to bounce a few times here. Um, so this looks different every time I do it. And what if it just goes up and then stays up forever? That'll be funny. Okay, let's play. And there we go. <laughs> so it's so fun and it's so quick to play around with these animation ideas. And this is all online on the website. So then you learn about Bezier curves. This is where we bring in some more of the math. And then also squash and stretch, which is an animation principle. Uh, so I actually minored in animation at USC and squash and stretch was one of these principles that we learned about animation class. So this is what's really neat about Pixar and Box is that we keep mixing the filmmaking principles and as well as the math and it's all intertwined. So here we can also change the size of the ball and we can use Bezier curves in order to do that. And I am right now just randomly placing things to see what happens, but that's actually really fun. <laughs> uh, okay, I love it. Uh, so here's an example student output from that. So this is a student that spent more time than me and made a, a great animation of a ball uh, bouncing. And you can see how they use squash and stretch to add a little more oomph to the animation. There are also hands-on activities uh, that are hands-on, like your actual hands versus your keyboard hands. Uh, so here's one where you're animating first a ball and then a lamp and using post-its or just a bunch of you know, pieces of paper taped together. And uh, so you start off with a ball, similar to how you were doing virtually, and then you try to animate a lamp. So I found a great student output where they animated a lamp and I'm pretty sure what's happening in this animation is that the lamp falls in love and then just literally falls. So that's great. That's the sort of thing that you can do with these little animations is that you can tell a little story with just some taped up pieces of paper. All right, so now let's talk about another unit, and this one will go more, as well, more into math. This is rigging. Uh, so rigging is how you add joints to characters in order to be able to move them in different ways. So a joint here to make this rotate and a joint here to make it rotate this way. And this one, once again, has uh, activities that you can do on the site. Uh, so here is an exercise where we're trying to make the lamp look shocked, like, <laughs> so I think what we're going to need to do is rotate. So you have to figure out which deformer you want to use. Um, so I think I need to rotate arm two and then rotate the head. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Very shocked looking lamp. I got it right. Woo. Uh, so that's rigging the lamp. We can also be a little more free form with how we rig this head. Um, and we can add deformers. So I want to maybe scale this mouth uh, so we can make it really wide. <laughs> oh, let's add a, a wide transformer there. Okay, like this, and then woo! And then, oh, and I can make it look like a beard. Amazing. So this is just really fun, and it gives you a feel for what animat animators actually do. And of course, there's underlying science, uh, math behind this, which is geometry and transformation. And this unit even includes some coding. So this is a coding challenge. So if you do have any students that have done the coding on Khan Academy, this is a great way for them to continue, uh, continue doing programming. Uh, you can see that the coding community has created lots of characters. So we've got a minion, an Olaf, an anime character, a penguin, a dragon, all sorts of fun things. Okay, and then finally, there's one more unit I want to show, which is effects. And this is how you make special effects like explosions and fire and water. This is really fun. This is done using something called particle systems in computer programming. 
And this unit also incorporates a lot of physics because effects are really about trying to mimic the physical nature of the world. And we have to incorporate understandings of things like vector motion. So this is a little more advanced unit, but a really fun way to get into physics for folks that are doing physics. Um, so we've got some interactive simulations that we can play with to try and see how we can use particle systems in order to make things that look like different, uh, you know, different physical matter, like liquid. Uh, so let's see, if I want to make water, so how much does water flow? How much gravity is affecting these water particles? How big are the particles? How elastic are the interactions? These are all things we can play with. And this is, you know, what uh, Pixar animators actually do when they're trying to make something look like water or look like slime or fire. It's all particle systems with different effects. Similarly with fireworks, this is also a particle system, but here we've got different physical forces acting on it. So these are going up in the air and then falling down. And we can change all these things. So I want way more particles and I want different colors. And it's just so, it's so fun. And this gives you a really, a real feel for what's happening in the movies. And this is much safer than actually launching fireworks for the record. You know, a lot of people have been doing that lately. And then we've got some physics exercises too. So as you can see, this one incorporates a little more physics knowledge. So yeah, that is a high level overview. I didn't show all the units. Uh, there are a lot more units than what I showed and saying they're uh, compatible with a range of age levels um, from elementary all the way up to high school or independent learner. And there's really a lot of fun ways that they integrate math and science and humanities. Um, and if you are a teacher or even a parent, this educator's guide is, is really great because it um, gives an overview of all of this and also has educator's guides for each of the units, which has even more things, more activities you can do, more discussion prompts. Uh, so after you watch this video, you know, do these questions with your students. It'll also give the recommended age level, how much time it'll take, so these teacher guides are super useful. Definitely check them out if you're gonna be using this in a classroom or even with your, with your children. So to conclude, uh, I just wanna show this great picture where a teacher asked his fourth and fifth graders who was loving learning animation through Pixar in a Box. And this was their response. So it's a, it's a very fun and popular way to engage with a lot of different topics. And I'm happy to answer all your questions about it. Okay, thank you so yeah. much, Pamela. Um, so we're gonna have some time right now to answer any questions that you might have for Pamela. Um, we're also joined by her, her colleague, uh, Roy Chan. So if you have any questions, he's gonna answer some of the questions there. Sorry, I didn't get to introduce you, Roy. But if you have any questions for, um, for Pamela, go ahead and put those in the Q&A box and we'll see, we have a few that are in here right now. Um, so what was just asking, I think earlier on, they're just asking basically so they get to make their own movie. Would you describe it that way? Um, yeah, so some, uh, I have seen that some, uh, some classrooms and some students will actually end up making their own movie. The final activity for the art of storytelling is doing a story reel. So a story reel is a storyboard plus, uh, plus dialogue and music. So that's not actually a full movie. It's the full uh, prototype of the movie. It's what you would pitch if you're pitching a movie in, inside Pixar. It's not the full movie because in order to make the full movie, you know, you need to actually do the final characters and animation. Uh, I do know some classrooms have made the actual movie using things like stop motion animation. So if you do have the time and the willpower, it, it does take a long time to do stop motion animation because you have to position every frame. Uh, but it is really fun. So a few will do that, but the actual final activity is the story real. 
Um, so we have a question for you. Somebody said, I love your computer programming course on Khan Academy. And they want to know, Pamela, what sparked your interest in programming and how did you first get involved with Khan Academy? Uh, yeah. So yeah, I love programming. I've been doing it since I was young because both my parents are in, into it. Uh, my mom did programming for NASA. So she programmed the things that you know, rotate around the earth. <laughs> um, and, uh, and my dad also does computer science. So I really loved programming because you could create things that you could then share with other people. So you can create a game and then share it with people and you can see what, you know, how other people use that game. Or you can create an educational app and share it with people and see how you know how they use it to learn more so i did i just love the capability the power of programming to be able to create things that have this global impact and uh, i hope that lots of people learn programming so that you can create things that have a a positive global impact and you know make the world a little better somebody asked about um, more computing classes like Python and algebra with CS. Are you planning to have, is Khan Academy planning to add more of those? Uh, great question. Yeah, so most recently I created the AP CSP course. So if any of you are at the high school level, that should be very helpful for you. AP CSP covers a wide range of topics, uh, including, you know, um, algorithms and data analysis and uh, big data and uh, simulations, a lot of fun stuff in that class. Uh, we haven't put any new programming environments like Python. Uh, we would love to, uh, but we aren't going to do that at least for the next year. Um, so uh, there are a couple of questions. Yes, we will be sharing it. For those of you who joined us late, we um, will be sharing a uh, link to a recording of this webinar um, so you can go back you missed the first part of it. Um, so I have a question, what courses or activities should someone do in high school to go into Pixar, Disney, or to do something like that? What kind of courses would you recommend? Uh, that's a great question. You know, it does depend on what it is you want to do at Disney or Pixar. Um, so for example, if you do want to do computer animation, then uh, in actually do the modeling and the animating of the characters, that's very much an, an art and design pursuit. So then I would recommend doing art electives when possible. Um, but then if you want to go into the technical aspect of it, well, that's actually a lot of math, um, you know, as we're seeing from Pixar in the box. So there I would be doing a lot of math courses, especially linear algebra, because that's used a lot in computer graphics. Um, so those are two components of making movies. There's other things like casting and voice acting and stuff like that. So it depends on what you want to do. Uh, but the two main things would either be an art focus or a math focus. And programming, of course, if you're going to be writing programs. Uh, so math plus programming. Uh, will these, um, the, the things you showed us, will they be up on the website for a long time or will it's just like a limited time that they'll be up there when can people access those yeah these are all available on the website and they should be up there for i don't want to say forever because we don't know how long the universe will last but uh it should be for a long time mm -hmm. and they're all they're all free and as in all the ones i showed today are also available in spanish uh, and potentially other languages if you speak other languages you can check to see if they're translated in the other ones mm -hmm. Um, we have a question. Are there any additional topics in the works for Pixar in a Box? Um, new learning modules, just interested in what projects might be coming. Um, she's been using this in her, their Coder Dojo for a few years and kids love it. Nice. I love Coder Dojos. Uh, so I don't believe there's any plan for Pixar in a Box. They did recently create Imagineering in a Box, which is another really fun, uh, fun thing from the same same folks that created those videos. So I would definitely check out Imagineering in a Box if you haven't yet. That's the most recent thing we've put out. Um, what age do you recommend a child start coding? 
That's another great question uh, because coding can mean so many things. So I've seen, you know, like board games like Robot Turtles that can be done at a very young age. I've seen, um, you know, robots that can be done by programmed by kindergartners with an iPad app. Um, so in terms of starting coding, uh, you know, there's coding can mean many things. So I usually tell people to go to code.org slash learn. And there you'll see a bunch of activities with different grade levels and you can filter by grade level. So if you have someone who's in first grade, you can filter and say, show me the coding activities for first graders. And that'll give you a feel for the kind of activities people think are appropriate at that age. So I don't think it's about what age you start coding. I think it's about what kind of coding you're doing at each, at each age. And, um, and also just different ways of learning computational concepts. So in first grade, Maybe you're not actually writing code, but you're playing some sort of game which has you think in a logical way. And that's an introduction to computational thinking. Um, for what we teach on Khan Academy, I uh, typically recommend around middle school as being a great age. And could you again say what the difference between Pixar in a box and Imagineering in a box? Yeah, Imagineering in a box is actually how they make the rides, the Disney rides. Uh, so very cool. I haven't personally been through it as much as I've uh, been through Pixar in a box. Um, but yeah, it's a very fun exploration of what goes into making a theme park. Um, and I, I think that's I know the answer to this, but is this a self self paced course or kind of how how long would you think recommend that it would take uh, to get through it? Uh, good question. I did um, take a note of how long. Um, so a teacher, we had a teacher do a webinar uh, who, who uses Pixar in a box a lot. And she, uh, she said that in a trimester, she went through all of the storytelling lessons. So that was doing it in a classroom. Um, if you're doing it on your own pace, which you can do because it's all uh, freely available, then you might you might go faster than that you might go slower it can depend on how much effort you put into each of the things because you can spend a lot of time making a storyboard and making a story reel uh, but if you are doing it in a classroom as uh, she said that a trimester was a good amount of time to do the art of storytelling mm -hmm. um so i have a question what do you think about cubelets uh, I'm guessing they are a robotic thing. Uh, yeah, I haven't personally used cubelets. Um, they look quite fun. I don't. I, I haven't used a lot of hardware because um, because we generally don't teach specific hardware on Khan Academy since most people don't have access to it yet. But there are there's a lot of really fun hardware sets out there. Um, I do think that hardware and electrical engineering is generally much more accessible than it was when I was in college. I'll admit that in college, I didn't like electrical engineering. There were just so many fiddly wires and it was hard to make anything cool. But these days, there's just, it's, there's just so many cool hardware sets that you can do with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and then you can connect it to LEDs and animate the LEDs. And it's just way easier to make something that's uh, really fun um, more quickly. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that uh, it's a, it looks like a fun thing to try out cubelets or anything, anything like that. Um, we have a question about the posting the coding website you mentioned. Um, it wasn't to. Oh, yeah, uh, I will just type in the chat. because I don't know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's code.org slash learn. Or code.org slash learn. I'll also include that in the uh, follow-up email that will go out to all of you. Um, so you have that link as well. Um, can you go over just again, what were the, the course, the ages for the, the different courses? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so generally the art of storytelling and the art of lighting are the ones that can be done at the younger ages because they don't involve uh, they don't involve the math uh, directly. Um, so the art of storytelling is a lot of writing and also, you know, uh, drawing visual things. Um, and the art of lighting is uh, on the visual side. So those two are more at the, can be done possibly starting third, fourth grade. And the other ones, it, 
it really depends on the particular topic. Um, so that is what I would refer to the educator's guide to check. Like if you want to do rigging and that involves some geometry transformation, the educator's guide should give you, um, should give you a guideline for what grades are most appropriate for that. Okay. Um, I think we have time for just a couple more questions. So um, when about registering, do you need to register separately for this or the login for Khan Academy still works for this one? Yeah, just use your Khan Academy account, um, both for Camp Con and Pixar in a box. And uh, if you're interested in Camp Con, just log in and then just start working on one of those get ready for grade level classes. Um, or if you're the parent, have your kids start working on one of those get ready for grade level classes. And then you'll just instantly start getting those emails every week. And for Pixar in a Box, same thing. You can just start working on it or start assigning your students it, however you want to do that. Okay, and um, finally, uh, just a question about general courses in general. Do you know if there are any courses that are new courses that are coming out for Khan Academy soon? Or are you creating any new courses right now? Uh, we do have, we will have updates to various courses in time for back to school. So in a month from now, you'll probably see a bunch of things updated. Um, like math courses are getting updated. Some AP courses are getting updated. Um, I recently updated AP CSP and will be publishing a lesson about machine learning soon and machine learning and bias. And those are the updates that I know about right now. We're generally always <laughs> working on things, uh, but we try to time our updates uh, according to the school year. So we usually try to do a bunch of updates during the summer. Okay. Um, and last question, uh, will there be any writing courses or language courses um, on, Khan Khan on Khan Academy? Are there any all animation courses? Okay. Uh, yeah, so we actually did recently start making ELA courses, uh, English, and, English and language art courses. So you can see that in our, in our menu are the ELA courses. So that's where you can practice reading comprehension. And um, we have that for a variety of grade levels now. So I encourage you to, uh, to check that out. And uh, the other question was about all animation courses. So the, in terms of animation, we have the Pixar in a Box animation unit. And we have in programming, uh, we have the programming where we actually make animations while you're doing it. That's what we have for animation. We don't have something specifically about how to do animations. Um, I'd probably recommend checking out uh, Blender, which somebody mentioned. Blender is an open source uh, free 3D modeling package. Uh, I used it in a high school classroom a few years ago. Uh, so it seems to work at the high school level, N maybe not for early ages, maybe maybe SketchUp. I'd have to research for early ages. But yeah, I would check out Blender and then also probably look um, online for tutorials about how to do animation. Great. Um, thank you so much, Pamela. I um, just went to follow up uh, with a couple of announcements. Again, uh, a link to this recording, um, uh, all the links that Pamela mentioned will be shared in a email that will be sent out to you um, and also available on our website. Um, again, we, we are in the beginning of National Summer Learning Week, so we want to hear from all of you, uh, uh, your summer learning stories, whether it's a memory from your childhood, the achievements your, your kid has made, or an amazing moment from a summer program we want to know. So we're encouraging you to share your stories on social media using the hashtag Summer Learning Week and Summer Matters. Um, we we'll also want to invite you to a live Twitter chat that we'll be having tomorrow with Learning Heroes and Great Schools. Um, so that's going to be Tuesday, July 7th at 2 p.m. Um, and you can follow the latest tweets using the hashtag Summer Stride Chat. Um, and definitely check out our website for more resources and information about Summer Learning Week and all the uh, events that we will be having this week. Uh, for this week, we've merged our popular Voices of Summer Learning, uh, Summer Webinar Series with Summer Learning Week. So, uh, but look out for more in the series to continue throughout the summer, or you can look back on some of the past webinars on our webinar, on our webinar page.
And finally, uh, if you're not already, please follow us on social media. Uh, that's the best way to keep up to date uh, on all the new things that are coming out for Summer Learning Week. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or join our community, sign up for our newsletter, uh, and join special cohorts of peers interested in topics like sports, literacy, STEM, or youth employment. Um, you can also find out more about our consultation support and technical assistance for your summer program. Um, I want to thank Pamela for joining us today, sharing all the great information about Camp Con and, and Pixar in a Box. I hope you guys found this webinar in, uh, informative and helpful, and um, just want to wish you a great summer learning week and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.